My name is Emma Koba, a public health veterinarian. It's a pleasure to share with you part of the research work that is ongoing here in Kenya. Uh, the title of my presentation is Dog Health and Demographic Surveillance Survey in Sierra County Implications for Rabies Control. Rabies is endemic here in Kenya and the domestic dog accounts for over 99% um, of the total uh, human cases. And rabies elimination is now a global goal, and Kenya is not left behind because we already have a national elimination strategy running. So in Africa and many other developing countries, um, the rabies control, implementation of rabies control faces challenges, and one of the main challenges is um, lack of uh, sufficient knowledge about dog population sizes and a high dog population turnover that quickly lowers our vaccination coverage between vaccination intervals. So we design a dog health and demographic surveillance survey in Western Kenya to estimate parameters of um, dog demographics and management that are relevant for rabies control. So the study was angered on an ongoing uh, study within the HDSS run by the Kenya Medical Research Institute. Uh, this happened in 10 villages in Asembo within 1,500 households. We recruited dogs and followed them for a period of 15 months, collecting information related to demographics and management. So the study uh, comprised of three main visits. The first visit was the recruitment visit to a visit household, recruited dogs, and each dog was given a, a unique identifier. Combining that with the dog name, the sex, the age, and the description of a coat color for easy follow-up. So during this recruitment, we collected information regarding um, household characteristics, dog demographics, dog movement, dog bite cases, um, and all that. The second type of a visit was the follow-up visit that happened every month. And during this period, we collected the changes in demographics that happened within a period of one month. And the third, the, uh, the third type of visit was the clinical visit where following cases of uh, dog illness are uh, reported through a toll-free number given to each of the study households or through reports from a community interviewer, a team of veterinarians offered response. That is veterinary response. Um, so part of our finding is um, we recruited 1,213 households but only 38% owned at least one dog. So during the initial recruitment visit, we recruited 800 and 802 dogs, but recruitment was a continuous process. So any new dogs coming in, any new birds, we recruited them in the household. And by the end of the 15 months, we had recruited a total of 2,516 dogs. But by the last month, we only had 732 dogs. So we lost uh, 1,430 dogs, and these were mainly puppies, and most had died at 56%, at and some had been given away as puppies. Um, so for the, new dogs, for the new dogs that we recruited after the recruitment visit, they were mainly puppies and mostly on litters. These are the puppies that were born from the female dogs within the recruited households. We estimated the dog dense, we estimated the dog population for CIA County at uh, 139, 324 dogs and a dog density of 55 dogs per kilometer square. So most of the dogs that we recruited were the, the local breed uh, and the dog to human ratio was one to seven, and there was a male predominance of uh, one to 1.3. So regarding the management practices, 61% um, of, of the dogs were freely roaming, and they were never uh, restricted at all, while 38% of, of, of the dogs were partially re restricted in their movements once in a while. The dogs were mainly kept for security purposes. That is 95% of the total dogs. And in this rural setup, people never feed their dogs. So 97% of the dogs were scavengers walking around looking for their own food. 
So the population had a high reproductive potential of, um, with a literate of 1.8, and the males had an overall um, a higher expectancy compared to the female at 4.1 compared to the female at 3.8, and the survival probability for the male dogs was higher compared to the females. And being female uh, increased the risk of dying by around 23%. So survival probability was also lower in the first year of life um, and increase in age by 12 months reduced at least the risk of dying by 43%. Um, vaccination of dogs was not common and the only, um, the only disease that at least was vaccinated was rabies. So during the study when we started we had a vaccination coverage of 5% which went down with time and when, the, when a mass dog vaccination happened, only 36% of these dogs got vaccinated. And the commonest syndrome causing illness was the gastrointestinal. We also had cases of human dog bites, and within the period of 15 months, 15, 59 dog bite cases were reported, and the affected population was mostly children under 15. We collected uh, brain samples from suspected rabies cases, 14 of them, and eight turned positive on PCR and DRIT. Breeding control was rare in this, in this area, so we had like 12% of the males castrated, 5% of the females paid, and um, this was not verified, so it, it could actually be lower. So in our discussion and conclusion, we say uh, the population in this area was highly dynamic, and the population was quickly repressed through new births, deaths, giveaways, and disappearances. The high proportion of dogs under one year, at any given point we had almost half of the population under one year, indicates a high population turnover. The herd immunity against rabies was below the WHO recommended and therefore not sufficient to break dog-to-dog -dog rabies transmission. The high proportion of free roaming dogs, scavenging dogs that are unvaccinated, um, increased social contact, that is dog to dog contact, dog to human contact, and this increases the risk of spread. The intact females and intact males, intact females will definitely attract a lot of free roaming males during the breeding season. Um, the presence of human dog bites and confirmed rabies cases just confirmed that indeed rabies is endemic in this region. And we also say that the dog to human ratio that uh, is reported in this can be very helpful in planning of vaccination campaigns, can be used in estimation of um, dog population sizes, vaccines to be procured, the labor required. And in our recommendation, we, we recommend integration of dog population management programs into rabies control programs and we suggest community sensitization on responsible dog ownership, population control through at least castration and space to stabilize the population, and interventions that can reduce the rate of population turnover. And due to the high turnover, we say that at least twice a year vaccination as opposed to once. I acknowledge the following organizations for their support in this work. Thank you.